Let's suppose that you have a set of poker chips, and there's four different colors. We have red, blue, black, and green. And we define a partition in the following way. Partition the set of poker chips into cells based on their color. What would you get? Something that looks like this. Okay, sounds good. Now, take the same set of poker chips and define an equivalence relation in the following way. Define an equivalence relation on the set of poker chips such that two chips are equivalent if and only if they are the same color. What would you get? Something that looks like this. Hey, that looks like the same thing. And in fact, it is. These are the same thing. And a partition determines an equivalence relation just as an equivalence relation determines a partition. So let's make this a little more official. Here's a theorem. Let tilde be an equivalence relation on a non-empty set S. Then the collection of equivalence classes under tilde forms a partition of S. In other words, we're saying an equivalence relation determines a partition. Later on, we'll go the other way around and show how a partition determines an equivalence relation. But first, let's prove this. So if we're going to show that something forms a partition, we need to show two things. We need to show that the set is the union of all of the different cells of the partition. And we also need to show that if you have any two cells, that they're either the same or they're disjoint, meaning they have nothing in common. Okay, so let's let tilde be our equivalence relation on the set S, and we'll let X be an element of S. And the first thing we're going to show is that S is the union of all of the different cells. Okay, how to do this? Well, if X is in S, then we showed earlier that X belongs to the equivalence class of X. Well, if that's true for each element in S, then S must be the union of all the different equivalence classes. That's pretty easy. What about the second part? So let's let A sub I and A sub J be any two cells, and we want to show that either they're the same or they're disjoint. Okay, well, let's let X and Y be any elements of S. Then it must be true that either the equivalence class of X equals the equivalence class of Y, or they're disjoint. That was something that we showed earlier. But this is really just the same thing. If we say that the equivalence class of X is really A sub I and the equivalence class of Y is really A sub J, then it's really saying the same thing that we want to show. Okay, so we showed the two different properties that you need for a partition. What about the other way around? Suppose that uh, we have a collection of A sub I's and that's uh, a partition of a non-empty set S. And we want to show that there's an equivalence relation on S such that the cells of the partition are precisely the collection of equivalence classes under tilde. Now, if we want to show that something is an equivalence relation, we need to show three things. Reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. So, let this uh, collection of A sub I be a partition of S, and we're going to define the relation tilde such that x is equivalent to y if and only if x belongs to a sub i and y belongs to a sub i for the same cell a sub i. It means x and y are equivalent if they're in the same cell, which is what we did with the uh, poker chips, if you think about that. We said that um, we partitioned it by color, and the equivalence relation was they are in the same cell if they're the same color. Okay, let's look at the three properties. First, we have reflexivity. This one's easy. We know that S is just the union of all the different cells, so it must be true that any element that's in S belongs to some cell, and in particular, X belongs to the same cell as itself. So X is equivalent to X. Symmetry. Suppose that X is equivalent to Y we want to show that y is equivalent to x. What does it mean that x is equivalent to y? Well, if you look at the definition of uh, our relation here, it says that x is equivalent to y if and only if x and y are in the same cell. 
So that means that X and Y must belong to the same cell. But that's just another way of saying Y and X belong to the same cell. So Y is equivalent to X. Transitivity. Now suppose that X is equivalent to Y and Y is equivalent to Z. We want to show that X is equivalent to Z. Well, this means that X belongs to the same cell as Y, and I'll call that cell A sub I. And this means that Y belongs to the same cell as Z, and I'll call that A sub J. And we know from the definition of a partition that either these cells are the same or they're disjoint. They have nothing in common. But they do have something in common. They have the element Y in common. Y is an element of the intersection of A sub I and A sub J. So that means that the intersection has something in it, so it must be true that A sub I equals A sub J. Well, that means that X and Z belong to the same cell, and X is equivalent to Z. One last thing, we should show that the cells are the equivalence classes, although this is pretty easy. If you just look at the definition of the relation that we started with, the equivalence classes are the cells of the partition by the definition. So what we've shown here is that a partition is really the same thing as an equivalence relation, and an equivalence relation is really the same thing as a partition.